All right, people, we are here for week one of another draft league, but this is a little bit different than usual drafts. Rather than uh, just drafting the Pokemon, you also are putting players on your team uh, from Pokemon's Discord. So I was put on to the Mikumungus team, and our week one opponents were the Hungry Hungry Hippodons, the Hungry Hungry Hippos. So we drafted these, but we were the first to draft actually, very fortunate. So we basically got to, once it snaked around, uh, every other two we got to pick automatically. So first was Mew, uh, very excellent pick as it is very versatile. It's a Swiss Army knife, you know. And then Clef, the number one S tier Pokemon in OU at one point and still very dominant. Also, another Swiss Army knife can do a lot of things we need to do. Nido King, very powerful special attacker. Uh, gives us that nice uh, sheer force earth power sludge wave all that and uh, these two were drafted together then we got Megazard X and Skarmory. Megazard X obviously a powerhouse giving us a very offensive physical attacker and in addition to Dragon Dance and we also have Skarmory incredible bulky team already off the bat and then with Mew and Clefable having access to Stealth Rock, Skarmory too, but also having access to Spikes along with Mew, so we're looking pretty good there. Also gives us a Defogger along with Mew. So just lots of options right off the bat. And then at this point, we were thinking, you know what? No one's gone for any type of weather. You know what I'm saying? And since we pick first, we could automatically just go ahead and say, you know what? Give us Venusaur and Torkoal to give us some nice, powerful special attackers. Because at this point, I mean, Mew, could be a good special attack, but it really has to set up. Venusaur obviously too, but it has chlorophyll and growth. And then Torkoal is another defensive wall, so just more walls and also uh, weather. So we got, um, we already have fire type, but now we got the grass too. And obviously after this one we needed a water type to complete the fire, grass, water core. And uh, stack attacka just to deal with any trick room nonsense just in case, also giving us another steel type. So just giving us versatility so that we could run any type of sun, trick room, offense that we wanted to. And uh, we went with wall rain in addition just to give us a nice, uh, because aside from for alligator, we don't really have any water type switch-ins. We also don't really have any ice type switch-ins. So this is a nice wall for us. And also the meme tropius because we have one, two, uh, three dragon dancers already. Why not add on yet another dragon dancer? and just, uh, you know, do the best we can with that. And our first opponents, look at their team. Absolutely insaneo, man. The Specs Dragapult just completely wrecked our team. My, my stomach dropped when I saw we were facing them right off the bat. And they have Land OT, Mega Mawile, Rotom Wash, Weavile, show me my knockoff switch-ins. They're non-existent, brother. All I have is a Clef. So this was uh, incredibly threatening. And in addition, they also have Rose Hat, no problem. We have we have Stack Attack to threat, scare that off. Not only that, the, after we did Venu Cole, they, they got kind of threatened by that. And they're like, yo, let's get this nice giggle of Stalin, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, they also have Grapple Locked, just as, uh, you know, get a nice fighting type in. I kind of wanted a fighting type, but you know, you take what you can get. So, very threatening team. I was looking at the team and I'm like, you know what? They could just bring the top five and those alone would be threatening to us. So let me show you guys what I predicted. Uh, Specs Pult, Scarf Landos, SD Mawile, Leftovers, Rotom, uh, Boots Weavile, Gigalith. You know, the Gigalith, you don't really need the Stoutland, you know? You could just have the Gigalith just to get rid of our weather and that's enough for uh, Dragapult to come in. So, very threatening team. Let's see how it turned out in the actual replay. So, pretty accurate, not gonna lie. I mean, it is to be expected, but they did bring the Stoutland over the Weavile. Very interesting strategy. Uh, let me make sure I get this music off, because otherwise it's gonna be blowing everybody's eardrums out. Uh, let's put this on slow, just in case I forget to pause. So, right off the bat, okay, that's too slow. So, we got the Lando versus the Nido King. Excellent lead for us. We can just ice beam them right off the bat, but we weren't sure what item they were. They could be Scarf and guarantee outspeed us and hit us with an EQ. And Needle King is very good versus their team once we get rid of the Rotom and the Lando. So we got to get that out of here. Scout for the EQ. 
They go for the Smackdown. Very nice play. We could have just Ice Beam and run after that and killed them, but that's okay. That's okay. You know, we got to gather the information. So they're Smackdown. We're like, okay, that's fine. We get some nice leftovers recovery. Go out into Mew, see what they do now. They go for an EQ. I'm like, okay, we took some ship, but that's fine. Better to keep Skarm healthy. Go for the Dragon Dance. Uh, good play on our part, I think. Now, little do they know the, the horror that is about to come against this Rotom. Because this Rotom is a huge, massive threat to our team. Walls just... <gasps> Nido King can't do squat diddly. Uh, Feral Garrett can't do squat diddly. Charizard can't do squat diddly. Even a Solar Beam does like 50-something, man. It's absolutely garbaggio. And it's going to just get hit by a Hydro Pump either way. So what did we have for this thing? Well, we had a nice little Leaf Blade. Bada bing, bada boom. With the increased chance to crit. If we could have crit, we could have taken this thing out immediately. Would have been at 59%. Would have been able to uh, do all types of stuff to their team. So, they hit us uh, with the Rocky Helmet. Very surprising there. Uh, to be Rocky Helmet and overgo leftovers. But it does make sense considering how many physical attackers we had. They hit us with the uh, yellow color. But little do they know that we indeed are Lumberry. I was expecting a will o -Wisp. They decided to run uh, Thunder Wave, probably for the Charizard, so that makes sense. So here, they're going to swap out into their Lando. Little do they know. Okay, well, I think we were going for the Mawile, but that still does a pretty good chunk. We are hit by uh, Recoil and Rocky Helmet. Rocky Helmet's going to take us out, but we were planning on hopefully triple axling them. But the Lando's at 50. Lando's at 50. And the Rotom is at 19, so we're in a pretty darn good position. So we've got Squirtle over here. All these Mons, uh, shout out to Soul Man, uh, named after different types of Squirtles. And shout out to Seaburns, who did uh, most of the team building on these. So go for EQ uh, as we Dragon Dance up. So now we're fast, so we can just knock this thing out. We, we will take a little better Rocky Helmet ship, but that's okay, that's okay. Uh, the Intimidate brings us back to neutral, so we get the heck out of here. Dry Squirtle is 100% our switch into this thing every single time. I don't care what they go for, man. Iron Head, Play Rough, SD, whatever. We're going to Lava Plume you out of the existence, man. You can't do squat to us. Base 140's defense. Eating it up. So they, they want to get the heck out of here. We're like, okay. We were thinking about this turn. Because my first reaction would be, okay, just set up rocks because you know they're going to switch. But we thought one level deeper. It's like, yo, what if we go for the yawn on the switch? That way something gets put to sleep if they don't switch out. And then we set up rocks for something else to come in. That way Gigalith is forced out. Take some nice rocks on switching. So we get that guy out of there, go out in the Feraligator. One of our other teammates, they were like, yo, Rotom could be Pain Split. And after seeing that this thing was Rocky Helmet, it's only form of recovery could have been Pain Split. Um, so that's interesting though, like I don't know if the Lando was defog or if the Rotom was defog, but if it was, it's only other move could have been a Volt Switch or Hydro Pump, and I have to believe it would have been Hydro Pump for the King Squirrel. So, yep, there's the pump as they take out our Squirtle, they just have to stay in. Now they're guaranteed dead to rocks thanks to sand. Uh, we were predicting either a pole or something to switch in just in case. But we, we figured they would just sack themselves off and stay in. So this makes it easier though because go for Ice Beam. That way they can't bring in Dragapult. They're forced to go Mawile who we easily switch into because we do not want to risk uh, having to switch into Spec Shadow Balls. Go for a Stone Edge to completely destroy us. Now this, I got to hand it to him. What an absolute fire set for prepping for the Torkoal. I didn't even know this thing got Stone Edge. So... They were very well prepared for our dry squirtle over here. If they would have predicted that on the switch the first time, this would have been a much rougher game for us. So Sunlight's still up. We don't have any other way of uh, removing the sand if they switch it in. But at this point, notice, Lando gone, Rotom gone. So that means that Earth Power is free to go. They are obviously gonna go for the Sucker Punch. That's okay though, because we guaranteed live or I guess we could have gotten crit there, but you know, we had to try to avoid that. Uh, we Earth Power and take him out. In comes Gigalith to of course set up the sand. We don't want to lose our Nido King because it just wins if we get rid of Stoutland. So we go out in a Skarm who switches in every single time. Now, this Metal Squirtle over here is not your average Skarmory as you will see. And this Stoutland is not your average Stoutland as you will soon see either. 
they go for the Thunderbolt. I've never seen a Thunderbolt Fountain in my life. But we are fully Spadef's arm, and we eat that up. Take some more Life Orb Chip. That's lovely to see. We can just keep roosting this all forever. And they have to take in rocks next time. So Dragapult comes in, takes the rocks. We needed that guaranteed rocks chip in order for Ice Beam to guarantee KO because I don't. I think it did 99% max or something. So it takes the rock chip that we need, and we're getting up those hazards, my friends. They only have three Mons left. We need these hazards because, as you will see, they go for the sub. We thought they might be sub, but we thought they could also be specs. But they do indeed go for the sub, but that's even better for us. Because as you will see, they go for the Dragon Dance behind the sub, but my friend, we just go for the Whirlwind. And Statlin takes even more chip. They go for more Thunderbolts, doing absolutely nothing. We can afford to go for another Spike to make it take more chip. Um, because we are well within range. We can just keep roosting up. Every time they take 10%, um, I forget how much Spikes do in Stealth Box, but I think it might be dead on switching at this point. Gigalove comes in, takes 17%, so that was 29%, so I think after Life Orb it's dead. Or once we get up another layer of spikes right here, this thing is guaranteed dead. So the go for the Rock Blast, they wanted to be more accurate than Stone Edge, makes sense. They get the full amount, that's okay though, because we are faster, we can roost it up. Pretty obvious roost, they go for the EQ, that's fine though. Because we can just stay on this thing, we can just whirlwind it out, we can just keep going for it. They go for the Rock Blast this time, maybe predicting a Zard. But I mean, we can stay on this thing forever. And eventually now, we can just go for Whirlwind for free. They go for EQ, no point in that. We can just Whirlwind them out, take more chip. Stoutland is dead at this point. Nido King guaranteed wins. But Skarmory is not done, my friends. It's not satiated. All right, it needs more more food to be satiated, my friends. It's going to go for the Whirlwind. Once again, Giggle of Dead on switching. Dragapult comes in, it's dead to one more switch and it has to stay and it has to go for one last desperate attempt of something. It goes for the Disable. We're like, oh snap, we can't use Whirlwind. Now I know what you're thinking, friends. Well, usually Skarmory runs Body Press because of its massive defense step. But remember, this is a Spadef Skarm. So we are running Brave Bird for this Dragapult. They think they can just set up for free, but no. We are going to go for the Brave Bird and take them out. And now... The Gigalith is dead on Switch, and that is going to be GG's to the Hungry Hippos. Skarmory is putting in that work. Got three kills this game. Absolutely crazy. So, very good showing in our first week. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully, I'll be able to get more of this content up. I am going to be out of the country for about two and a half weeks, though. So, my channel is going to go a little bit dim for a bit. Um... But hopefully I'm hope, hoping to come back. I, I, I'm not going to be able to get that Ryuga video up. I'm sorry. But hopefully I can edit it as soon as I come back and upload it. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next Wi-Fi battle. Or uh, maybe more Draft League stuff. So, bye.